we begin this service by acknowledging that we are meeting on indigenous land covered by Treaty 18. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples have built communities here, cared for, and used this land. Specifically, we thank the Petum, Anishinaabe, and the Watum, who are the most recent stewards of this place. This acknowledgement reminds us of our friendship and legal obligations to indigenous peoples and our responsibilities to care for the lands. Good morning. Today is August 27th, 2023. We are here in Alistair. Welcome. And we welcome those who visit us in person or on YouTube in the name of Jesus Christ. Fellowship will be held right after this service in Shilton Hall. We have one announcement, Ken Pratt. Good morning. Uh, I received an email from, uh, uh, from Tuck uh, talking about a new grant that's going to be avail made available to United Churches um, of $25,000. The purpose of this grant is to improve um, our offerings of activities for seniors and other people who wouldn't mind being seniors in the church. So such activities as we have now, we have the cribbage club, we have the men's breakfast, which could become the people's breakfast. Um, but this, is, th this money is meant to be, say you've always wanted to go to Niagara on the lake and a bus tour and, and see a play then we can plan, we use the money, we can plan for something like that. So on September the 7th, I'll be going online with the United Church Kindred Works and uh, uh, the girl who's the director of engagement. So what I want you to do is put on your thinking caps and if there's something like an exercise class, a, a reason to get together just to keep the, the, you know, the seniors engaged and, and their minds active and give you a purpose other than just coming here on Sunday for services and you've had that idea, then please uh, feel free to contact myself or Linda at the office or it'll be Catherine while Linda's away. But um, the, the United Church would wants to really help us with these programming and if they're giving the money it would be a shame not to be offering something that you would like to see happen to the church so as Sheldon did on the Big Bang put on your thinking caps and uh, let's uh, let's make this project work thank you that can any other announcement? If not, I invite you to turn around to pass the peace of Christ, saying peace be with you, responding and also with you.
join me in call to worship responsibly. We know that no matter where we are, God is there. Come into this place to, re to reconnect to the source of life. May we learn to put the blessings where they belong. So that those who most need it are reminded that they are blessed. So let us worship God together. Our opening hymn from Voices United, number 278, in the quiet cover of evening. of the week. Holy One, sometimes we turn away from you, isolated by our fears and anxieties, trapped in our busy dedication to important goals. Thus we ignore our true purpose, failing to pay attention to your word, and neglecting our calling as disciples of Christ. While we may falter some days and feel we are losing our way, we rejoice this day in God's glorious gift of grace given freely to all. We are a forgiven people. Scripture reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, 
For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and, of, and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things happen? How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? This is the word of God, and thanks be to God. Today is the eighth Sunday of the Summer Bible series. And the main theme is to be born again. Question, are you a born again Christian? Or is it, it's the language born again too hard and too heavy for you? The notion is sometimes, again, I'm going to use this book, The Heart of Christianity, written by Marcus Borg, page 103 to 125. The notion is sometimes quite narrowly defined. In some Christian circles, to be born again can mean accepting a certain set of beliefs, often expressed in a question using a salvation formula, such as, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? But did you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, especially by speaking in tongues? Are you f familiar with the phrase, speaking in tongues? Are you? Okay, thank you. So, respond quickly, okay. <laughs> Do you believe in the rapture and the imminent second coming of Jesus? Those who claimed that they were born again generally express their rigid righteousness, judgmentalism, and sharp boundaries between us and them. Former President, U.S. President George W. Bush, uses it a lot when he invaded Iraq in 2001. If you stand with us, you are part of us. If not, you are our enemies. And he often claimed that he was a born-again Christian. And God bless America. He repeated again and again at the end of his speech. Without hesitating, the born-again Christians use the language, God speaks to me. A Korean yoga teacher once said to me, after he found that I was a United Church minister, Sung Min, be always cautious when you call the name of God and particularly when you 
are in prayer. Because you are dealing with an invisible world, and you may not know, but quite often, an evil spirit might interrupt in between you and divine. Who knows? I think that's one of the, the best advices that I have ever heard, or I have ever, heard, ever had. I bring up the theme of being born again today because it is at the very center of the New Testament and the Christian life. And we, the Christians in general, particularly the United Church people, need to reclaim it. The need to be born again is the theme of the story of Nicodemus at the beginning of the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Like most texts in John's Gospel, it is rich in symbolism, missed connections, and double meanings. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night. He came to Jesus by night. He is the first of the story's double meaning. It is night. What's the opening, the, the opening line of our opening song? In the cup of evening. It's, it's still morning, but we sang in the cup of evening because we enter a spiritual world, an invisible world. So it's okay to sing it in the morning service. When we pray, we close our eyes. In other words, we enter in the invisible world, the spiritual world, or in other words, we enter the evening. The symbolism of light and darkness abounds in John. The story of Jesus walking on water begins with the evening came. It's the same idea. Jesus speaks to people in the Gospel of John saying, I am the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. It is what the Johannine faith community saw Jesus through his life, death, and resurrection. I am the light of the world. For the Johannine community, Jesus is the one who gives light, gives sight to those who are blind. And in John chapter 9, he heals a man born blind. 
That's the main theme of the Gospel of John. Nicodemus came to see Jesus by night, the light of the world. In chapter 8, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. In chapter 9, Jesus heals the man born blind. Though Nicodemus comes to see the light, he is yet to see the light. He addresses Jesus in flattering terms. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. That's the general understanding of Jesus at the time of Jesus. Rabbi! But the Johannine community is not a rabbi. He is the light of the world. In what seems like a misconnection, Jesus responds by changing the subject. It is as if he hasn't heard what Nicodemus is saying or perhaps has heard beneath his words. In any case, what follows is is the key verse of the text. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. No one can see. Again, it's about related to light. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. The phrase being born from above contains double meaning. In Greek, for born from above can also be translated as born again, or born anew. Translating, unfortunately, requires choosing between the two, but John's intends both meanings. To be born again, to be born anew, is to be born from above. That is, born of the Spirit. Nicodemus, though he is a highly educated class, he doesn't get it. He is a literalist. Like many other characters in John's Gospels, including disciples of Jesus. Taking Jesus' words literally, he misses the point. How can anyone be born after having grown older? Can one enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Literally? He is still in the dark. And that is the meaning of the dark in the gospel. So Jesus repeats the point. Very truly I tell you, No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. The word water also has a double meaning. On the one hand, to the readers of John's gospel, it would evoke baptism. On the other hand, parallel to flesh, it refers to the waters of birth. Though one is born of water, born of flesh, one must also be born of the Spirit. That is, born anew, born from above. So we are here to be born again, born anew. 
born from above. That is part of the purpose of our worship. As the text continues, Jesus emphasizes the connection to the Spirit. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Let me, uh, let me tell you this. I mean, in order to prepare my Sunday reflection, after I prepare my you know, writing, the written form, on Thursday, I read it again and again six to ten times. And okay, after this, we don't know when you know trains go by. So, whenever I read it, some spirit works in me and add and add and add. So, some of you have some this script. And you may not, so sometimes hard for you to follow, right? For me, that's, that's the spirit works in me. So sometimes, so I like to make my sermon shorter than regular. But sometimes 30, it, it takes 30 minutes. So for this, for this Sunday, I prepared my, my sermon Thursday, and I tried not to repeat it. So I read it only twice. So I'm a little bit nervous at this time. But I believe the Spirit works in me and in you. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. There's another double meaning or triple meanings. In Greek, the word for wind is also for press and spirit. Whenever you read or encounter wind in the Bible, just think about it the breath of God, the Spirit of God. Which is the source of life and the source of rebirth. To be born again is to enter a new life through and in the Spirit. So for an hour as we gather, singing, praying, and listening to the Word of God, the breath of life, the Word of God, breathe in and out and in and out. The point is obvious. What Nicodemus needs is a spiritual rebirth an internal rebirth, and a personal transformation. That is what we all need as an individual and a communal church. Paul mentions the same topic in his letter to the Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. 
There's only one condition. If anyone is in Christ. Being born again, being born from above, is to make all things new in our daily life. Or to make myself new. So for me, being born again is, is not a one-time life event or life claim. It should be a lifelong process in our daily life. Another expression of being born again by Paul is found in his letter to the second to Galatians chapter 2, verses 9 to 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer that I live, but it is Christ who lives in me. It's the same idea. Are you familiar with the song or with the hymn? It is no longer I that live in, but Christ that lives in me. Sylvia, are you familiar with that song? I learned it, my first settlement charge in Newfoundland. So she knows that. But that song was in our old hymnary. United Church hymnary. Are you, are you, do you remember the, the blue hymnary? It was there. Okay. Yeah. It is no longer I that live in, but Christ that lives in me. That's the song we used to mean. Our ancestors used to sing. That's the, you know, one of the major central topic in the New Testament. So, what life would it be like if Christ is in me? That's the topic of the next Sunday, which is the final one for this season. Thank you. And I'm, I'm so happy that you, you are here on Sundays for the past eight, eight Sundays. And if you turn around, quite a good turnout you have made. And I think we are, we are all happy with this crowd. Offering invitation in gratitude for the love that we have received. We offer our lives and our living to carry God's message of love into the world and our community. Our offering is now being received. Offering prayer. God of abundance, you have called us to be the church. And so we share our abilities, resources, and love. Committed to the way of generosity, kindness, and grace, we offer ourselves.
Amen. A closing hymn from Voices United, number 625, I Feel the Winds of God. Before benediction, I'd just like to remind you that next Sunday we still have the same time at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's a late day weekend, so it's still 10 o'clock even though it's in September. So following Sunday after late day weekend, we will return to our regular Sunday service starting at 10.30 in the morning. And now with Christ as our foundation and his words of assurance echoing in our lives, let us leave this time and place of worship to be God's faithful people in all the places of life calls us to be.